Today we're going to embark on a journey through the vast expanse of the universe, so join me as we explore the five largest objects in the observable universe, from the red giant Jupiter with its 400 mile per hour winds to the newly discovered Alconius, a super galaxy estimated to be half a million times more massive than our Milky Way. So get ready for an out of this world adventure, and let's jump in. The Red Giant. Now today's episode could be a nice and straightforward list of the five biggest galactic clusters, but that would be a bit boring and repetitive. There's only so many ways to describe what a group of galaxies look like, and I'd like you to watch this video to the end because watch time's important for me. So instead we're going to be coming through four objects which are the largest in the category of object that they fall into until we get to the single biggest object in the universe because I don't want to disappoint you. Since the earliest days of amateur astronomy, our eyes have been drawn to the red giant which dominates the night sky, a marvel so great that the Romans named it after the king of the gods, the master of the sky, Jupiter. When we think of the galactic record breakers, we don't tend to think of our own backyard as their homes, but in truth, Jupiter is very nearly the largest planet we've ever discovered, capable of fitting the entire Earth inside it over 130 times. This makes it so massive that its gravitational pull is actually slowly stealing our own moon away from us, moving it towards the giant at a rate of about three centimeters each year. So it's not going very quickly. Despite that, they do come bigger. In 2013, scientists discovered a true Goliath located 440 light years away in the Ophiuchus constellation orbiting the star Rox 42b. There they found the gas hypergiant Rox 42bb. This behemoth is 2.5 times the diameter of Jupiter and estimated to have a mass nine times of the red giant. It has pushed what scientists believe to be the uppermost limits of what a planet could be. So, how did a planet that big ever form? Well, in short, we have no idea. Now, we do know that Rocks 42BB, the catchy name there, is an extreme stellar object in more cases than just its size. It's five times further from its star than Pluto is from our Sun, and it takes about 2,000 years to complete a single orbit. This has ultimately led scientists to conclude that Rocks 42BB was not always destined to be a planet, but instead it was actually meant to be a star that simply failed to ignite. Jupiter is estimated to have winds that regularly reach 400 miles per hour, and it's estimated the rocks 42BB has winds that reach four times that amount. Scientists also believe that due to its immense size, rocks 42BB may have an entire asteroid belt within its atmosphere. It's also been modeled that the planet may produce so much heat that it might be possible to live on one of its hundreds of moons. To put this in perspective, if rocks 42BB was put in the same place as Jupiter, we would see an orb about half the size of the moon in the sky each night and its gravitational pull would be enough to affect our tides and cause worldwide tsunamis. Yet still, those numbers absolutely pale in comparison with what is coming up. Number 2. The Dog Dethroned 1.2 kiloparsecs from Earth, or 3,900 light years, is the gargantuan ball of burning plasma named VY Canis Majoris. Located in the constellation of Canis Major, aka the Big Dog, it was first discovered in 1801 and was quickly identified to be one of the brightest of all stars in the night sky. This led many scientists to believe that it would be oh, one of the biggest stars that we'd ever discover. When science advanced enough to measure it, we discovered that Canis Majoris is one. 1,420 times the diameter of our sun. <laughs> this means that if the center of this leviathan was placed in the center of our star, its outer corona would reach past Jupiter. And if you were to travel around the surface of this monster at the speed of light, it would take you six minutes to circumnavigate it at the speed of light. <laughs> this is compared to a moderate 14 seconds for our sun. On discovery of how giant V.Y. Canoris Major is, scientists were beyond belief. It pushed what was known as the Hayashi Limit. This was a theory that no star could ever exceed 3 billion times the volume of our sun or it would collapse in on itself. V.Y. Canis Majoris measures in at about 2.7 billion times our sun's volume, so that's bloody close. The Hayashi Limit was the stern belief of astrophysicists until 2012 when a star that would eclipse even V.Y. Canis Majoris was discovered. 
As found by the extremely scientifically named Very Large Telescope, or VLT, we're not joking, located in Chile, roughly 9,500 light years from Earth, the star UY Scuti was recatalogued. Located in the Scutum constellation, the star was not new to astronomers, but original estimates of its size had always been based on its relatively low luminosity, at about 900 times the size of our Sun. It was only when the VLT took a closer look that it was discovered that Scuti actually measures in at roughly 1,708 times the diameter of our Sun, which means that it isn't only far greater in size than VY Canis Majoris, but that it smashes the previously cemented Hayashi limit to bits. For comparison, if UY Scuti was placed at the same point as our own Sun, its outer corona would not only engulf Jupiter, but it would also engulf Uranus, Neptune, and even Pluto. So, it is unknown how Scotty achieved its absolutely insane size, but there is one thing we know. It is not stable. In fact, scientists anticipate that both UI Scuti and VY Canis Majoris may, in all reality, be long dead already. The extreme size of both means that at this end of their lives, rather than collapsing relatively harmlessly into a neutron star, it's expected that each star will let out the most violent explosions in the universe supernovae. Since it takes nearly 4,000 years for light from VY Canis Majoris and nearly 9,000 years for light from UY Scuti to reach us, it's of the belief of most scientists that this has already happened and that when the light eventually does reach us, it will be like a second sun in the sky. Luckily though, apart from lighting up our night, scientists have also agreed that we are likely outside of the range of any dangerous parts of the supernova, although when it comes to the size of stars, they've also been wrong on that before. Number 3. The Cosmic Giant Alcyonius was the name in Greek mythology for the king of all giants. He was said to be capable of stepping over even the mightiest mountain or squashing the gods themselves between his feet. Fittingly, the largest singular cosmic object ever discovered shares his name. It's located 1.1 gigaparsecs or 3.5 billion light years from Earth, and that's where we can find this absolutely titanic galaxy. Of course, this means that the light we're currently seeing of this galaxy is older than life on Earth. So just how big is Alcyonius? Well, to explain that, we first must put it into perspective. So let's start with home, the Milky Way. Our galaxy is roughly 52,000 light years from one side to the other. So then let's have a look at our closest neighbor, the Andromeda Galaxy. The same galaxy that in roughly 100 million years' time is going to crash into our own, so we've got that to look forward to. Andromeda is roughly 100,000 light years from one edge to the other, and it is the largest galaxy in what we call the local group, the galactic cluster that we find ourselves in. And while we're at it, it's also worth noting that our galactic cluster is only about 10 million light years from one edge to the other. Alcyonius, on the other hand, well, it's 16 million light years from one end to the other, meaning that if it was in the same place as our own galaxy, it would take up our entire local group on its own. As a common theme to this list, scientists have questioned how Alcyonius is capable of sustaining such an unbelievable size. The answer being that at its core, there must be one of the largest black holes to have ever been observed. It's been estimated by scientists that the black hole at the center of this galaxy galaxy is about 500,000 times more massive than our own already supermassive black hole. Of course, that's not to mention that the galaxy was only discovered in 2022 thanks to the brand new Low Frequency Array, or LOFAR, one of the newest and most advanced radio telescope arrays on the entire planet. As such, scientists have predicted that as we look deeper into space, we're probably likely to find more massive galaxies. This is not to mention the questions that Alcyonius raises. Light from the galaxy is 3.5 billion years old, and eight of the ten largest galaxies ever discovered are over 2.5 billion light years away. So why haven't we found any super galaxies anywhere near us? According to the theory of the Big Bang, matter should be distributed equally across the universe, but that isn't what we've seen. Instead, we've seen a concentration of hypergalaxies only in the far depths of the universe. This has led to some theories that there is some great cosmic force preventing galaxies forming like that anymore, some force which ripped all the mighty galaxies apart. Number 4. You're going to need a bigger telescope. Still, at this point, we find ourselves faced with a philosophical question. What exactly is an object? Is a galaxy an object, or is it a collection of much smaller objects? And if so, then what's bigger than a galaxy, and does it count as an object? This 
is where we reach galactic clusters, groups of galaxies which rotate around each other in mysterious ways. And by mysterious, we really do mean mysterious. We still don't know what makes galactic clusters form. Yeah, gravity is a potential answer, but when we look into deep space, the one common thing we see is that everything is moving away. Except for the things in our own galactic cluster, and we actually see the same with other galactic clusters. They're not ripping themselves apart, but rather they're racing towards each other while moving away from us. This makes no sense. How can galaxies in a cluster be attracted to each other while at the same time racing away from other clusters? Either way, this mystery only deepened with the discovery of the Great Wall. The Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall is located 4.5 billion light years away from Earth in the constellations of Hercules, Corona Borealis, Lyra, Budis, and Draco. It can be found just beyond a piece of space known as the Great Void, notable for being almost completely empty, and we'll come back to that later. The Great Wall is a collection of some of the oldest galaxies that we've ever discovered, including several of the largest ever found, with Alcyonius being on the wrong side of the Great Void to not be counted as part of it. Scientists have absolutely no clue how it formed, and its existence denies ideas like gravity forming galactic clusters due to its sheer size. And how big is it? Well, 10 billion light years from one edge to the other. For comparison, the observable universe is only 93 billion light years in diameter, meaning it takes up one ninth of the entire observable universe. How can any structure that large hold itself together? And the answer is we just don't know. Yet despite all of that, the Great Wall is dwarfed by our number one largest object in the universe, and that's number five, Fear of the Dark. Let's take a step back a minute and look at that great void that we mentioned earlier. It makes absolutely no sense to exist. When the Big Bang happened, the current theory is that there was nothing else in existence and therefore there should be an even distribution of matter and energy across the entire universe. So vast expanses of nothingness should simply be impossible. Equally, vast expanses of more matter than what is around them, like the Great Wall, should also be impossible. But they clearly aren't. They exist. So what's going on? This oh, was just one question the scientists at CERN sought to answer with the opening of the Large Hadron Collider in 2008. The collider was designed to smash particles together at nearly the speed of light in order to observe how the Big Bang could have occurred, and it did this in the hopes that the resulting miniature explosions would model the bang. In doing so, scientists discovered what they already knew. Matter would distribute itself across empty space evenly, no great clusters, no great voids. This was obviously a bit of a problem. As such, scientists were forced to look back at far older theories in order to explain what was going on. It was then they discovered the theory of Fritz Zwitsky, dating from 1933. Zwitsky invented the theory of what he called dark matter. This is matter or energy which is not observable, understandable, cannot be experienced, and cannot be measured in any meaningful way, e.g. the scientific definition for something that doesn't exist. For much of Zwitsky's life, the theory gains no traction, but all of a sudden, it was put back in the spotlight. The reason for this? Using the particle collision experiment, scientists were able to model the universe and calibrate how much of it must be dark matter or dark energy. And it was then that they discovered the true magnitude of this unknowable force. Scientists found that only 4% of the universe is observable matter. The rest is dark matter. It was subsequently explained by scientists that the thing that's pushing everything we can see away from us is dark energy, which makes up about 60% of dark matter. As such, the largest single object in the universe, not that it's really an object as we can't see it, is dark matter, which makes up 96% of everything. 